The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 22nd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go take a look at the, uh, well, I just totally lost my thought there. We're going to go take a look at uh, what these markets are doing. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears are doing. So let's do this. Uh, go ahead and give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question, we'd love to hear from you. If you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A bit of a mixed bag. That mix is only coming from the transports. They're up 120 points, about 8 tenths percent. Other U.S. indices are trading to the downside. Dow's down 2 tenths. Same for the S&P. at 69 and 8 points, respectively. 6 tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 113 there. A half percent for the Russell, 10 points there. The semis are down 47. That's a 1 percent move. Gold's off 5 bucks. Silver's down 25 cents. The U.S. dollar index is up just slightly. Natural gas is up 17 pennies. Big move there. Lights recruit us off a buck in the 30-year treasury print out of 11807 now the leaders in the clubhouse dollar wise to the upside garmin up 12 bucks haven't seen that name for a while that's a 10 percent move get gent gen therm is up 12 bucks 25 percent move wix.com is up 10 bucks nine percent toll brothers six bucks and west pharmaceuticals up six bucks as well to the downside the leaders are palo allo network 99 bucks 27 percent move super micro 39 bucks a five percent move z scaler 36 bucks 15 percent crowdstrike 32 bucks 10 percent micro strategy 25 bucks three and a half percent so we got movers and we've got shakers but let's begin our day by what let's go take a look at just stay on the set of charts here let's take a look at the daily equity future contracts what do we know out here we know we've got Rhodes momentum indicator top on the es on the nq on the dow on the russell 2000 now, the only one that's really an issue right now of giving us a potential change in trend signal would be the NQ. That would require a close to below 17,531 today and tomorrow out there in order for that to be accomplished out there. So since that's the only one that is showing us a potential change in trend, I have to say, well, let's come back and take a look at the Dow as well. Let's go take a look at their intraday charts and see what they're signaling to us. But before we do that, just curious how futures are trading in terms of other currencies, see if there's anything out here to be paying attention. No, nothing uh, really uh, that's of major uh, interest to us at the moment. So let's go switch our panels, get over to that white set of screens out there. We've got multiple time frames, and we'll start off by take a look at the NQ. So in the daily time frame, no really need for us to spend any time there. If we look at the five-hour time frame chart, bar number nine is in the process of completing. As long as price closes below, 17,582.50 uh, at 2 p.m., you will have a confirmed TD9 count bottom that will complete as we come into today's close out there. So there's also a Rosemont indicator signal that's been triggered. A bullish reversal candle would confirm that pattern. What price would need to do, what price would need to do, what price would do if we get those bottoms, uh, would rally up towards its oscillator and change line. 17610 is the current print. Price as you can, now that number is going to change up and down. But price as you can see would need to close above that to suggest to you and I that whatever bottom signal here is going to gain some traction. Otherwise that's just where the counter trend move would end. 
end. On a four-hour time frame chart, I don't have a bottom signal out here, so let's skip that. Go to the two-hour time frame chart. Uh, this panel, I believe this bar closes at noon. It does. So uh, we've got about 50, 49 minutes left in this uh, candle session. Read right now, and that's not a key reversal. So if it generates a bullish reversal candle, the two-hour time frame chart for the NQ would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, what's really important about the two-hour chart, let's just simply expand this out. So it's really interesting, and we want to spend time, or you want to spend time paying attention to this, whether you're short or long out here. If we take a look at this 120-minute oscillator and change line, we can see that it is held as resistance with the exception of one bar, two bars, that is. So the first one was at 2 in the morning. Then we got right back below it on the next two-hour bar. The next one we're traded uh, closed just above it was at 6 o'clock this morning. So this tell us, tells us, you and I, we need two consecutive closes above that level. The first one could take place at 12 noon. The second one, then you come back to and take a look at it at 2 p.m. Now, if that unfolds out here, what we can see is that you'd have a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, a TD nine count bottom that is still active out here. That formed yesterday at two o'clock in the afternoon, so that low is still, uh, um, so it still has a bottom on this two-hour time frame chart. So all of that would signal to you and I, and I'll pull back. We'll take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, but this is telling us what the NQ would want to do in those instances. Let's at least let this bar complete at 12 noon. Would rally up towards the 17643 area. Now, if we pull back the five-hour chart, 17611 is its oscillator and change line. So those are the ranges that I would be looking for should we get this confirmation of this bottom signal. Now, we move down to the shorter-term time frame chart, such as a 60-minute chart out here. This, too, is trying to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And if it does that, as we get to the 12 noon session, this says 17,615. So we got 17,615, 17,611, and 17,643 are the price targets to the upside. I haven't talked about price targets to the downside, but that's because these intraday charts here are showing us bottom signals. Even the 30-minute time frame chart has a TD9 count uh, bottom. Looks like it might confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom here in the next 17 minutes. And that says then that the first area of resistance to watch as we do our progression downward in time is going to be 17,547 out there. So let's leave it like that. You've got 17,547. If price can close above that, then 17,615 would come into play. If price can close above that, then, well, then I don't know because that, that would get us towards that five hour oscillator and change line. So those are the time frames that I would be paying attention to the 30, the 60, the 120, and and the five-hour time frame chart to assist you through the day uh, for trading the NQ. I'd mentioned that the Dow was back at support uh, early this morning. So let's go see what its signals are generating for us, if any, out there. It's going to take just a few moments for this to populate. Not much I can do about that. Now, in the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it never got down. Oh, I take that back. So we've got two different sets of profiles. That's right. One set of profiles on the black background screen that shows the bottom of the Dow Equity Future contract at 38,461. As you can see in the upper left hand, maybe you can't see it. I'll just simply expand it out. It has a different set of profiles using similar data. Sometimes that just happens, gets a different calculation. We use them both. And by both, I'm talking about 38,370. So since price hasn't on this white background chart gotten back to a level of support. I don't know that we're going to see those bottoming signals, but let's go take a look anyways. Here, nothing on the five-hour time frame chart, nothing on the four-hour time frame chart, nothing on the two-hour time frame chart, nothing on the one-hour. Yeah, so there's basically nothing here inside the Dow. And I expect that now, knowing that we weren't really back to a level of support, utilizing Stevie's Ninja Trader charts. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We do have a, a couple of requests that are in, so let's get to uh, those. Uh, yesterday afternoon, or yesterday, yes, afternoon, yesterday, if you're listening to the show, we were taking a look at uranium for Lee B. And uh, I told Lee uh, that, you know, we would take a look at these charts today. And uh, so Lee now has taken a, a long position inside of uranium. And, and I certainly concur with uh, that trading decision there, Lee. You can see that you're going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom today. That says that if you do see a close below today's low, whatever today's low is that pattern would get negated and that would then uh, um, kind of invalidate the reason that uh, to have taken the trade out there so watch that but the reason why this looks like it has a very good opportunity to work out there one you've got the TD9 count bottom on the daily time frame We've got that going on at the same time we look at the weekly chart. Price is pulled back into its bullish structured support zone between 2755 and 2787. Of course, our monthly chart is one that we're most concerned with out here because it's got a TD9 count and could be a rose momentum indicator top as we get to the end of the month out there. But we're not at the end of the month just yet. When we take a look at the, you know, when we get to, uh, the way the progression steps would be if you get a bottoming pattern and getting back to support inside of a uh, any type of time frame can be a bottoming pattern. That's where the buy the dipsters would be. And here in case of your name, we know that is on the weekly time frame. So on a weekly basis, if we get a bottoming potential bottoming signal. We like to see some confirmation on the daily time frame. Then on the daily, we like to see some confirmation on a shorter term time frame. Well, it turns out, Lee, that uh, what you had going for you was a road momentum indicator bottom that unfolded this morning on a 30 minute time frame. Frames, uh, chart out here and that took place at 1030 so you've really got everything that you need now you need price to cooperate obviously but you have all the reasons to have taken a long position inside URA so congrats to uh, you on that now Let's do this, too. So I, I, you know, I knew that uh, we were going to be taking a look at this. I started uh, tinkering with our seasonal. My screen goes blank here or to black. Then I'll have to change this. We'll go take a look at something else. But this is the chart here for ticker symbol URA. It only goes back 13 years. This shows us right now that we're really headed towards the unfavorable seasonal time frame. 
In fact, an unfavorable seasonal time frame that would take us into a low maybe around October of this year. So that's a reason to, that's a reason, not the reason necessarily, but that's a reason to say that if you do get a close blow today's low, maybe it's worthwhile to take just simply the small loss on that trade. That's nothing that I see in the cards just yet because we've had everything kind of sync together out there. But one of the things I was able to do with this was kind of cool. It was an email that I received. I believe it was earlier this morning, and then I really started tinkering with it. Now, it's taken me a while. I, I don't have the exact – let me just do this here. And when I do this, if you take a look on the right-hand side, for the area that I've covered here, what it does, what I really like about it is, first, you get some great information on the right-hand side. But what I really like about it is now gives us by year how this instrument responded. So what's kind of cool about that, if I can get this to work, I was kind of getting it on and off, and that's a prox. There we go. Okay, so it's – okay, I think I do have that working. So now what's cool about this is that we can see the years where uranium has had uh, success and when uranium hasn't. And it looks like since 2020 is really the pattern. So you either go back to 2016 or 2020 to kind of take a look at the current patterns that are out there. I'd say why don't we just go back – by hitting this more button here and let's just go to 2016 let's just see if we take all the data from 2016 and we'll close off the uh, we'll start it at 2020 but just so that you can get a feel for what the average seasonal performance is by getting rid of or by understanding maybe the the pattern that might be in play out here number one it kind of it kind of it gives you an annualized return out here of uh, 10 percent over this uh, time period out here. What we could also do is take a look and see where we're at right now. So even over this time period here, Ali, we're still in the unfavorable seasonal cycle. But what if we started from 2020? So we get rid of 16, 17, 18, and 19. Then where are we at? Well, turns out it's it's still somewhat of an unfavorable seasonal time period with that favorable time period getting back to March 22nd. So I just wanted to lay that out there for you. It would not be the reason to have you not take this trade in URA. You've got the bullish structured daily, I have the bullish structured, bullish structured weekly profile and a TD9 count pattern on the daily time frame. But there was a second instrument that uh, Lee was taking a look at. He did take a long position of both. I believe he was, and, and the question, and so if we, let's go take a look at it. UEC is the uh, ticker symbol. Now, UEC has a totally different set of patterns. This is your, your uranium energy corp out here. In this one, I would say the daily time frame is not giving you the signal to go ahead and take the long position. You're in the money because you took that trade at the open. I'm just sharing with you that the daily time frame chart for UEC, which has a Rosemont indicator top, is trading below profile support and is likely going to go target 628. 628 is the TD9 count breakout level. When I look at the weekly time frame, okay, everything is good here. So good aggressive trade as price is pulled back into the area where a counter trend move to the downside would end. So if we take a look at this chart out here, in fact, I'll just make sure we're only looking at the weekly time frame. What we can see is that this has a bearish structured weekly profile. Price closed above it January 12th, and it remained above it really up until this week. So we've been for more than two consecutive sessions above that level. If a move to the downside is only a counter trend move, where price would find support would be between 635 and 668. And the low this morning out here was down at 642, between 635 and 668. So what I would say on this trade, I would say go ahead and stay with it because this level is held. But I would consider closing out on a weekly close below that 6, uh, 630, 635 level. If you get a weekly close below that, that's telling you we're likely going to see lower, clo a lower, lower prices inside of UEC. On a monthly time frame, Roachman indicator signal triggered right now. It's currently a dark cloud cover candle. Do not know what that candle session will be on the 29th of this month out there. So UEC looks pretty decent. Um, if we look at number of consecutive days up and down for this instrument, let's take a look at that. This is the daily time frame that we're taking a look at. Five days to the downside yesterday. Typically, when you get five days to the downside, it tells you about uh, that the move is going to be to the downside. It's going to continue to move to the downside out here. But you should at least get a two to three day rally out here inside of UEC. So LB, I hope that that provided. Well, you know what? Let's just see if on UEC, if there's any kind of a seasonal trend here for us to take a look at. So let's just go see UEC, um, Uranium Energy Corp. 
So we've got that. Let's see how many years worth of data we have. We have 18 years worth of data. Now, in the 18 years worth of data, we can see that this too has entered its unfavorable time period out here, which typically the only real favorable time period for this starts around the uh, November time. I mean, there's small smidgens out here. There's one that begins around April 11th, lasts through June the 9th. There's another one that begins November the 2nd and r really runs right through about, about the middle of February out there. Um, so what else can I provide you here? Uh, I could try doing that same thing, see if there's any year specifically that is should knock any of this out of the equation. Yeah, so I think I got to start smaller for some reason. There we go. I got that triggered now. And if I pull it, I don't go all the way to the end. I think I'll still keep it. Ah, oh, Stevie blew that. Let's see if I can get it here before we go to this break. Uh, the only year I would take out would be 2009. 2009, you can see, would truly be um, impacting this chart. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. 
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, I, during that break, I was able to go put all the years into the UEC uh, chart, the seasonal chart that we took a look at, took out that anomaly year of 2009. And even here, Lee, this t still shows you that you're in a very strong seasonal cycle, typically for this instrument to the uh, downside. So just use that information uh, as you will. And uh, thanks for waiting the extra day to uh, get that. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, Microsoft. This is for Nancy inside the Tiger's Den. So, Nancy, what we have with regard to Microsoft is we have price that is trading below the bottom of its daily profile, its bullet structured profile, trading below for two consecutive sessions. Tell us about a profile change in trend. Today is bar number seven of a TD9 count. This suggests that Microsoft could form a TD9 count between TD9 count bottom, that is, between tomorrow, Thursday, and Monday of next week. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, we don't have a, well, there's probably a sell the D point pattern. Let me just, uh, actually, let me do that on my other set of charts out here. Probably have that drawn in. So there's probably a sell the D point pattern that formed last week with that bearish reversal candle. No, there is not. I take that back. So Microsoft actually has an A to B equals CD to the upside uh, with 462.80 being its uh, first price target. So now what do we do? What we have is a consolidation with inside its weekly profile, Nance. That's between the levels of 420.82, that's your resistance, and 388.23 is your support level. Because price is below that green oscillator and change line, it has lost its momentum. And odds favor that price is going to make its way down towards that 388.23 level out there. I don't see a topping pattern on the monthly time frame chart and everything looks pretty bullish because price is above profile as well as that green oscillator and change line. So I would say with regard to Microsoft, we've had now what this could be four consecutive days to the downside. Let's take a look at its dance steps out here. Microsoft, since the, uh, so this will be helpful to you, perhaps helpful to you, Nance. Uh, since the bottom in Microsoft, which was back in September, of 2023, the most recent bottom out there, we can see that there was one four day retracement, four consecutive day retracements. Most of them have been two bar retracements out there. So today is bar number four. If this pattern keeps, Nance, what this shows us is that we should see a rally inside of Microsoft that I would expect or anticipate would last at least uh, two bars, two days out there. So I'd anticipate that Microsoft's going to form some type of short term bond. Doesn't have to. Uh, but just take a look at the patterns of the past out there um, before it would go and perhaps complete the uh, TD9 count bottom on the daily time frame. So hope that helped you out, Nancy. Thanks so much for the request. G-Man wants to take a look at Apple. Apple has formed or is attempting to form a new daily profile. So let's go take a look at that. That new daily profile is below the prior profile. What I mean by that, the bottom new profile is 181. That's below the prior one. The center is below the prior center and the top at 185.99 is below the prior top. That tells us about a descending trending market out here, even from a profile standpoint. What we don't have out, what we do have out here inside of Apple is it has found support in this general area. In other words, the first time that Apple was down here was back on January 5th, this price level. When it came down then, it had 62 million shares. The next time that it was down was at 47 million shares on January 17th. The next time that it was down there, 102 million shares on February 2nd. And then it was yesterday with 53 million shares out there. So for whatever reason, this is an area where price is finding support. What I don't have on my system that I can easily see is something that I can point to you that says that's why I just don't have it. We're trading below on the weekly base, the top of its profile. On the uh, monthly chart, we're trading below its bearish structured monthly profile. That's not a good scene. That says that Apple wants to make its way back to 147.01. But that ain't going to happen unless we start seeing Apple close below this little cluster area. And right now, for that price point out there, G-Man, the level that we would use would say be 179 and a quarter out there. You are inside this new profile, so it's bullish in structure. If, in fact, Apple can close above 183, even Steven out there, then odds would favor a move up to the 185.99 level. That would be the top of its daily profile. So that's about as good as I can get for you on Apple. Let's see what's going on on an intraday basis, see if there's anything here. With regard to Apple, there is a Roach Mentum Indicator bottom. Price is trading about profile resistance. So on a short-term basis, Apple suggesting that it should rally further out there. At least that's what it's signaling to and I. If we take a look at... Um and if we take a look at the uh, dance steps out here, um, six consecutive days to the downside for Apple. 
you'd think we'd get a two-day rally out here at least with uh, with inside Apple. But I do not know why price has found support where it has found support, and uh, that's just the way that it is. So, gee, man, I hope that that information helps you out. Kind of curious. Let's take. We, I know we're going to have a lot of data here for Apple, but just curious about its seasonal pattern, AAPL. Let's pull this up on our charts. Let's see how many years worth of data 43 years worth of data out here let's um let's do this here let's detrend this thing so apple kind of shows that right now hip historically over a 43 year period of time apple really creates kind of a consolidation pattern that almost lasts through the middle of april before it then takes off to the upside and then it's unfavorable seasonal time period is in june it likes to take the summers off it likes to take the fall off that would be september as well so kind of curious here now that i know i've got a, another tool that i can look at again i'm doing it this way i'm going to write an email see if i can get some additional instructions just to make sure i use this thing properly but this should work i hope Let's see if it does. Yeah, it does. So here, you know, what I wouldn't what I wouldn't say, if we were going to cut out years, you know, you'd probably cut out oh, 87, maybe 98 out there. But all, otherwise, all the other years look to be pretty good out here with regard to Apple. So that's its seasonal pattern. That's its information. G-Man, I hope that helps you out. Thanks much, as always, for the request. JT in New York is asking the question, and folks, maybe you can answer this yourself, uh, which looks better, the SMHs or the GDX? Let's go take a look at each of them, see if we can come up with a conclusion. Let's begin by taking a look at the SMHs. What do we know about it? Well, yesterday's gap to the downside created a Rhodes Momentum indicator top out there. Price is trading with inside its profile. The inside profile levels are 189, 189.79 as support, but we really want to call it 187.86 as support, the TD Nike out breakout level. Resistance, that's pretty easy, 203.27. All right, so we've got that for the daily time frame. We're trading below its uh, daily oscillator and change line. That suggests we may head lower, head lower to where? Well, we don't have a weekly top. We do have an oscillator and change on the has got support down at 190.86. So I'm going to go with the 190.80-ish area is where the SMH are likely headed to. So your question was, which one looks better? Right now, I don't think it's the SMH. It looks like it wants to head lower. I'm assuming that your question, JT, was which one looks better for a buy right now. But I don't know if that was really when you say which one looks better, if that's what you meant. But let's switch over and just take a look at the GDX charts. We can go back and forth. So let's take a look at GDX. And we take a look at the GDX. What do we know about it? Well, I would say this chart looks better. Now, you asked about Nugget, which is the 2X or 3X. I believe it's a 2X at this point in time of the uh, miners. You want to really make your trading decisions. I don't care if you trade Nugget, but you really want to make your trading decisions off of the 1X. That would be the GDX. And as you'll see here, the reason why I say this is a better looking chart than the SMHs is because this does have a bottom. And that bottom is a TD9 count. Now, this got a consolidation between 2589 and support and 2756. So the answer to your question, the GDX is the one that looks better. That doesn't necessarily mean that's one they should take a long position in, but it most certainly looks better. Steve Rhodes with TF and N. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Our next request coming in from Michael in Pennington. Michael wants to take a look at both Honeywell and Cava, C A V A H O N, is where we're going to begin our um, review. So, when we take a look at uh, you're asking uh, where is this headed to, I believe. Uh, right now, we're trading above uh, profile on a daily time frame. We're trading above its oscillator and change line, and we're trading above yesterday's high. Michael, the answer to this question is headed higher. Now, higher to where? The next level of resistance that I have, and I take a look at these charts, is really the top of the weekly profile. And that's where your battle is going to unfold. And that's at $200.65. The high for the day so far has been $200.38. Now, if price can, that doesn't mean that you should sell it. It just means that you are running into resistance. That's your next battle. If price can overtake 200.65, close above it, then the next price target would be 208.42, and that's a TD9 count breakdown resistance area. Now, what we also have is this thing gapped down with quite a wide-ranging bar. I'm sure there was volume behind it, 7.8 million shares to be exact. So far today, you're up with 383,000 shares. So you could be getting into an area that is a bit of a bumpy ride inside that gap. Those folks at 208 bucks, when this got down to 191, they might have said, you know what, if I get my money back, that's what I'm going to do. Don't know whether that's the case or not, uh, but this should continue to head higher with $200.65 being your battleground. And that's what I see when I take a look at Honeywell. This looks to me to be in an uptrend out here. Most recently, if we take a look at its stance steps, what we're seeing, normal behavior, two steps up, maybe one step back, two steps up, one step back, two steps up, one step back out there. So I would stay with this uh, trade out there. Hope that helps you out with regard to knowing where the battle is and why. Let's go take uh, your second instrument. That was ticker symbol C-A-V-A. -A. Let's get that up on our screen out here. Let's go take a look at Kava, uh, trading out at about 48.97. This is Kava Group out here. So what do we know about it? What do we know about it? This forms a... TD nine count top that is still in place out here. And today price is gapped down below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile, Mike. And so that is telling you and I that this wants to get to its next level of support. The next area of support would be 4656. That's a daily TD nine count breakout area. Below that, we'd be looking at 4372. That would be the top of its weekly profile. So I would say Kava 
uh, Kava group is likely headed lower. Watch the 4656 area for a potential uh, buy. Look for some type of intraday chart out there uh, that's got some type of a, a buy signal out there. And if that area fails, 4372 would be the next area to be paying attention to. Uh, Mike, thanks so much for writing in. Long time no here. Good to hear from you. McGuppy inside the Tiger's Den. He wants to take a look at Tesla. Tesla, I was driving around on Monday, President's Day. Yep, President's Day. Even though I'm not a president, I did get the day off. And that's a beautiful thing. And uh, it's the first time that I saw one of those Tesla god-awful, ugliest thing I have ever seen with four wheels on it. It actually, and I think most of you know, if you don't know, I am, um, if I say I'm not an artist, that's an understatement. You know, my kindergarten teacher called my mom in because of the stick figures that I was drawing, she was that concerned about my artistic skills. Stick figures, that, I'm not lying to you. In any event out here, Tesla, that truck I looked at, that what I was gonna get to was that looked like a truck Stevie would have drawn out there. That thing was, as I don't know if you've ever seen that thing. I mean, now we've all seen it, you know, on TV when he introduced it or what have you, but whew, I don't know what those things sell for or why somebody would have spent that kind of money whatever kind of money on that vehicle. But that doesn't, that's not why we're taking a look at Tesla. We're taking a look at Tesla because McGuppy asked the question, where is this headed to? And I would say it's headed to the north. It's headed higher so long as price is able to remain above 192.09. This formed a price daily roads momentum indicator bottom. We had price uh, close above the top of its daily profile for a couple of days. Yesterday, price pulled back and tested old resistance, which would have been the top of the daily profile. That may become new support. Now, you could actually even be, so where would this head to? So I would say, as long as it's going to continue this rally, if it does continue this rally, I start to get concerned about it if price gets back inside the profile level. As long as that does not happen, I would say the 211.06 area. 211.06 is the top, let me see here. Of the weekly profile. It is 211.06 is the top of the weekly profile. Strong support at 184.02. Both the center and bottom of that profile are down there. So McGuppy, let's see here. When I take a look at Tesla's dance steps, how many days up, how many days back, uh, everything looks pretty normal. I like that four-day move up, two days back, two days up, two days back. So you're just kind of doing the normal dance steps with regard to Tesla. As long as it holds the top of that profile on the daily time frame, my answer to your question would be this is headed to the north. This is headed higher. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Now, we've gotten through all of the questions out there. How about that? However, I know that somebody was asking about natural gas. So let's go take a look at the natural gas charts out here. Actually, let's take a look at the intraday charts for natural gas. Let's go see what's going on there. So if you give me a moment, I believe these charts, yep, we've got them set up. So we take a look at natural gas. Natural gas formed to buy the D point pattern. It did it on Friday. It did it when we had that bull sash candle. We were live on the air. I shared with people that as soon as I got off the air, that uh, subscribers were going to get an email that says take a long position. I actually waited about an hour and a half or so because the intraday charts, I think at that time, showed price was pulling back. But we went ahead and pulled the trigger on that. So you've got a nice buy the D point pattern. Part of the reason that we were pulling that trigger was because of the seasonality associated with the, with regard to natural gas. We're in a favorable season as we are. Uh, um, we are in a favorable season right now. Let me try to pull all this up here. I've got 33 years worth of data. i just do that. I don't know why I can't. There we go. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I'm really going to have to figure out how to use this new tool out here. But, whoa, man, now Stevie really screwed up. Let me see. What do I do? Huh. Okay. Um, there we go. Now we're back. So now let's go ahead and put in where we're at. Let's go ahead and detrend this thing. We've got how many years? Oh, that's 10 years worth of data. Let's get our 33 years worth of data. And over the 33-year period of time, this suggests that we should see higher price out there with the rally that takes us into mid-June. Now, let's go back and take a look at, see if I can, well, let's start off with small. Here we go. Now, let's do the large one. Let's try to do the majority of the year. And let's see, do we have any anomalies? So in 2022, yeah, that was an anomaly year for sure. 2022 and 2000 uh, would be those anomaly years. So what if we, it'll take a while to do this, I believe. Is there a way to select all? 
Yeah, select all. Perfect. So I said 2022 and 2000. Okay, so let's select all. Let's get rid of uh, 2022. Let's get rid of 2000. Just to smooth this out, just a, a tad. There we go. We're smoothed out. And even in this process here, this shows that uh, we are in a favorable seasonal time period with a rally that should take us up into mid-June. So even getting rid of those two years. So when we take a look at what's going on inside of natural gas on an intraday basis, the five-hour time frame chart, as you can see, is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top at 2 p.m. And that'll complete at day's end. So my suggestion here, if you're not in a natural gas trade, long trade, is wait for a pullback. We may get a pullback overnight out here based upon the TD9 count patterns that I see at the moment. See Roads with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at ticker symbol CHK. This is for Alton. And uh, Alton, uh, I believe you're in this trade here. Nicely done. Uh, this is right now taking on resistance. And that is the weekly profile resistance level. And we're trading at 80, 8311. The top of the profile is 8311. So what you'd love to see is you would. So right now, prices trade above. Uh, it's daily TD9 count breakout level at 81.84. We had done that once before. That was in the trading session of January 2nd. The very next time, to the, the very next day, the downside, it was back below that area. So you'd love to see it stay above 81.84. If it does that, if it does that, it tells us we're headed to higher ground. However, 
the caveat there is you really got to get a close above 83.13, don't you? So I'd watch the 83.13 level. I don't see anything bad or negative out there, just that you're up at resistance. So Alton, I hope that that helped you out. And I thank you as always for the request. We had a request to take a look at NVIDIA. They're coming out with earnings tonight. If we take a look at NVIDIA, someone says plus or minus 10%. Uh, which is uh, fits really with regard to the price targets, thank you, Tony, that I would have uh, given to you. If we take a look at the upside, so if I take a look at NVIDIA, you can't see it because I'm on the white background charts here, but there is an A to B equals CD pattern on the monthly time frame. That monthly time frame, the one to two ratio is at 738.84. Price got up to that level. So I would say the upside move would be up to the most recent high that we've had. That's about a $70 move or so. To the downside, the support level is between the TD9 count breakout here in the daily time frame and the weekly oscillator and change line, 616 to 642. Again, about a 10% move either to the upside or to the downside out there. Now, there is, a, some, there is support on the daily time frame also at 658.74. So I get the plus or minus 10%, Tony, uh, because that's really what the charts are showing us as well. So all of that makes sense. Is there any kind of a clue as to what it wants to do and i have to say it does have a daily and a weekly top out there those are the td9 count tops but there's no levels of support that have been broken so i don't know that it's giving us a clue other than the topping signal suggests that it wants to trade lower folks stay tuned for all the great program we've got lined up i'll be back with you tomorrow on terrific thursday please have a wonderful wednesday thanks so much for joining us we'll look forward to being with you again soon take care now